Being a dad isn't easy. When in that position, you're solely responsible for what happens to your family's livelihood. Dads have to protect the household and make sure that during his child's development, nothing life-threatening happens to the child. Being a dad is like creating your own world, one that your kids can live and thrive in. It's now your job, and it's a job I say the greatest basketball player that ever laced them up has dominated in as well. By now, I'm pretty sure you've heard of both his sons, Jeffrey Michael Jordan, born November 18, 1988, and Marcus James Jordan, born December 24, 1990. How tough is it to be the son of the greatest player of the greatest and most popular sport in the world? Well, only two people on the face of the earth can tell you. From my perspective, it must have not been easy and a joyous experience all mixed together. On one hand, you're living this lifestyle where you want or need for nothing. Your dad has one of the most coveted things among your demographic and you have unlimited access to it. Everywhere you go, you're a star without having to do anything. On the other hand, it must feel like living in a fishbowl at times people feeding you from above and you never know which food is real or what you should and shouldn't eat. No private or regular life because of who you are and oh yeah, the expectations everyone places on you to be the next in line. Must be tough, right? Or maybe it's the easiest thing in the world. Who knows? Well, these guys do. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Ash, get it, man. Stunt number one, I'm not dad. The biggest stunt of both these guys' careers has to be the fact that although Michael gave them everything they could ever want and need as children, the one thing he never gave them was the physical tools to get this very specific job done. Many people say Michael was a selfish basketball player and to this day has a me first attitude. But the most selfish thing he may have unintentionally ever do was not give his kids any of the outer worldly physical tools he himself possessed. I mean, the selfishness deep inside of him was like, I don't care if you're my son. There is and will always be one MJ. In his own words, you can wear the shoes, but you will never feel them. His oldest son, Jeffrey Jordan, was the first to try them on. As a high schooler, he was the subject of many conversations and news write-ups. I mean, could you imagine growing up in the era the most dominant player of any game was in his prime dominating? The world focused on young Jeffrey from he was five years old, and by high school, that focus was pretty split down the middle. One side is saying, damn, he's nothing like his dad. Short, and not just short, I mean tiny little arms, no athleticism, and no obvious natural gifts. I mean, maybe zero natural gifts, which is crazy to me that they don't have one single trait of MJ. They don't even look like the guy, I'm sorry. He was a starter for three years and was all Catholic League twice. He was also chosen for the 2007 Jordan Brand Classic. His younger brother Marcus was slightly different but experienced all the same difficulties and injustices as far as he too had not one single trait of MJ. Not very tall, although okay size for his position, short arms as well, and even wore glasses playing. It's almost blasphemy to have Michael's jeans and nothing similar physically. Oh, wait. Their mom must have some superhuman strong jeans. Marcus grew up watching his older brother and father, and now it was his turn to try on the shoes. On March 22, 2009, he led the Whitney Young Dolphins to the Illinois State 4A championship title. Jordan scored a game-high 19 points, leading Whitney Young to a 69-66 victory. He was rated as the 60th best shooting guard in the country as a high school senior by ESPNU averaging 10 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists a game, and earning All-State Tournament MVP honors. As you can see, both guys weren't really that good leaving high school, and some of it has to do with I don't think either of them were naturally given any physical tools suited for the sport like that, which we'll get into now. Stunt number 2, Maxed Out All the fathers out there listening, this is the part where you pay close attention. Not all of us will have sons that want to, or most importantly, can play the sport we grew up loving. 
You must enforce it on them or you will see them begin to drift further away from you or max out at an early stage while you continue to push them in a direction that's futile. In my opinion, just from the outside looking in, it's easy to notice that both didn't have what it took to play NBA basketball, and I think you could have seen that since high school. The younger Marcus was a little better and had a solid game, but nothing special or that stood out. Jeffrey would graduate high school and went on to attend the University of Illinois as a walk-on on an academic scholarship. He spent three years there and didn't see the floor much, and when he did, wasn't that good of a shooter, passer, defender, or ran the team from the point position well enough, mainly because he never really had the skill to do so. For his career, he shot 28% from three, 42% from the field, and 55% from the free throw line in limited minutes. Those numbers show one or two things. You don't work on your game in the wrong situation or you aren't good enough for the level. Wait, that's three, right? Okay. Jeffrey would then transfer to Central Florida where he'd see much more time as in 29 minutes a game, but still wasn't able to compete at that level because his skills just weren't good enough. There, he averaged two points a game and one assist while not shooting well there either. Marcus would go on to commit to Central Florida as well in order to play with his older brother. He would have much more success, especially in his second and third seasons where he was one of his team's leading scorers. But over the course of his career, he also struggled to shoot the ball well. And like Jeffrey, I think it's simply because he just didn't have the natural gifts to do so. You can work out all day every day on your skills, but if you don't have it, it just won't work in the end. A knife can sharpen itself as much as it wants to, it'll never be a spoon. Marcus and Jeffrey both would eventually leave the team in 2012 for personal reasons, but finish classes there. Stunt number three, meant to be. And the third and final stunt of these brothers with the great father is that it simply was never in the cards for them to be professionals in the NBA. Besides not having any of their father's likeness or ability, they also didn't have the skill to become a high level talent even though they were around it constantly and had the best example. That's the way it goes sometimes. We all can't flood this one sport and that's the beauty of the sport in a way. Sometimes you need guys like me to take a different approach and use a different skill set when it comes to the game. Maybe you make a better coach or better trainer or better agent or better analyst. We won't all be NBA players and you know what? That's perfectly fine once you understand that and are able to move on from it. Marcus would go on to open a shoe store called the Trophy Room in Orlando, Florida. Jeffrey has taken a management position at Nike and now lives in Oregon. All in all, I think this story is so important, mainly for fathers and anyone trying to push something that just isn't there. Instead of praying for my son to be an NBA player and finally live my dreams through him, I pray that he first loved the game of basketball as much as I did or has the physical tools to do it on a high level. If not, it's okay to go a different route with the sport. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.